Hello everyone, my name is Chris Salim in collaboration with CCLI. And once again, I'm very happy and excited to be here on the CCLI YouTube channel to share with you this video series on how to record and arrange your own worship songs from home. So if you're a worship leader, a music director, a church musician, and you're new to recording and the home recording thing is a bit confusing for you, you're at the right place and you're gonna enjoy this video series. I'm going to advise you to start with video number one and the link is going to be in the description down below. All right, so now let's jump in Cubase and continue where we left off on the last video. Now in today's video, we are going to look and dive into MIDI recording uh, or recording with virtual instruments. Virtual instruments um, are very, very common in today's music. Uh, they are used all the time. Um, could be for uh, recording piano, uh, keyboards, uh, all sorts of different sounds, uh, drums, bass. Uh, we, we, you know, we use them a lot in uh, electronic music, in pop, in worship, in rock. You know, so there's a bunch of stuff we can do with virtual instruments. We can even orchestrate a full orchestra using virtual instruments. So there's a lot of stuff we can do with VSTIs, which is short for virtual instrument. And um, in Cubase, there's several instruments already included. And just for a recap, I am using Cubase Elements for this video series, which is a stripped down version of the pro version of Cubase that I'm used to work with. And this one is a bit more affordable for anyone who is starting up his home studio. Okay, now in Cubase, let's look at the virtual instrument track that we loaded on the last video. And this one is Halion Sonic SE, which is included in uh, Cubase. I just loaded a quick patch, which is a kind of a uh, electric piano blended with a synth, a pad. Um, so this is what it sounds like. So I'm going to use this uh, pad for this video. And first, what I'm going to do here, I'm going to go down my project window and look at the tempo. So if I want to change the tempo of the song, I need to do it from there. Now, right now it's set up at 78 BPM, which is the tempo I want to work with. Uh, if you want to change it to 120 BPM, which is beats per minute, uh, this is where you'll be able to customize the BPM value. Then the metronome is at the bottom right of the um, project window. You can activate it by clicking on that metronome icon or by clicking on C on your computer keyboard. Right beside the metronome icon, is the settings icon that will open the metronome setup window if you want to change the sound of the click and other types of settings. We're not going to jump on that today, but this is there if you want to. So now I'm just going to make sure my click um, is working. So let's try this out. Perfect. That works well. Uh, now, as far as my track goes, I'm going to click on my VST track to activate it. I'm going to make sure that my input is linked to my um, MIDI controller. Perfect. And the output goes to the virtual instrument. So I'm just going to quickly record. And to do so, I need to activate the record icon, uh, which is this one. So. When it's activated, I can monitor the sound. And also, if I click on monitor, that will also monitor the sound without having to activate uh, to record enable the, tra the track. Okay, so even if I change uh, my track selection, if my monitor icon is open, it is still going to monitor the sound coming out of that vir virtual instrument. Okay, which is very practical. So I'm going to keep that on for now, select the track, make sure it's record enable, and I'm going to start recording on the click. So the click is activated and to start the recording, I can click on play, then press on uh, record at the bottom on the transport window or directly on the keyboard using the, uh, the star on the numpad. All right, so this is what I get when I record some MIDI. 
if I double click on my MIDI event, I'm going to get into the MIDI editor at the bottom in the lower zone. Now, MIDI is not like audio. Recording audio will create a wave form, a wave file on your computer, and you'll see the waveform on Cubase, and we'll see that on the next video. But as far as MIDI goes, MIDI will record data only. That has no sound. What those notes will do, they will trigger a sound on the VST instrument allocated to that track. Okay, so this is what MIDI does. So if you're new to MIDI, this is what it looks like. The good thing is you can do whatever you want. You can change the note of a chord if you want to. Let's say I want to just uh, bring that note down a step or two. I can do so, and that will change the color of the chord. And you can write down uh, some, uh, some notes directly with your draw tool. I can select all of them if I want to, and um, let me just bring those up or down. An octave up, an octave down. You know, so there's a bunch of stuff you can do with me that's very powerful. So in this case, it's going to trigger some sound out of my virtual instrument. So this is one way you can record MIDI by using a MIDI controller or by using your, uh, your draw tool and just write down some notes. Okay, that can be a very long way to program like chords and stuff like a chord progression. But if you're a good keyboard player or piano player, it's going to be very easy for you to use a MIDI controller to lay down your keyboard tracks using MIDI. If you're not very good on playing keyboards or um, you're you're lacking knowledge in uh, music theory, there's a very cool tool here in Cubase called the Chord Pads. Okay, I'm going to just uh, remove that um, that event and we're going to look at what the chord pads are. Uh, so this is basically what uh, you get by activating the chord pad tab at the bottom, at the bottom of the lower zone. Okay, there's the mix console, editor, sampler, control, and then you have the chord pads. And that will trigger a full chord. Only with a click of a mouse or by you know, using your MIDI controller and uh, by pressing on one of those blue keys right on top, starting on C1. So that will trigger uh, the first pad and so on, okay? And this adds to the creativity process when writing a song or when arranging a song or just use a, an old M, for example, and just uh, mess around with the chords, try different chords and stuff. And this is what I'm going to be doing today uh, with the song Holy, 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 which is an old M. Uh, so I'm just going to use, um, you know, the first two verses of that song, lay down a chord progression. Then I'm going to work on the rhythmic. Uh, on the next video, we're going to add some guitars and vocals. So now the cool thing is you can load some, uh, some presets if you want to. There's a bunch of presets available. Uh, for you to use all sorts of different scales, minor scales, um, major scales. There's different modes that you can load, which will add to your creativity. So let's continue with this major C scale. So what I did here on top, um, I did tweak a few things here. Um, instead of using a regular C chord, I just added a, um, uh, a G for bass note. Okay, so C over G. To do so, what I did, I just click on the arrow aiming down, which opens the editor. And from that point, I can customize my chord to my taste. So if I want to add a bass note, a different bass note than the root note, I can do so by selecting one of the notes here. I can add a seventh. I can add a, a diminished chord. Well, let's keep that to the root, diminished. Sus2, Sus4. So it adds different colors. It's very, very practical. Uh, so let's keep that one C major over G. And the second one, I added a knee as a bass note. So that will add some different colors when laying down my, uh, my chords. And something you can also do if you want to experiment a bit with the different uh, voicings, you can play with those, uh, those arrows, up and down arrows that will add different types of voicings. And same for tensions. This is a very fast way to, uh, to try different tensions. 
Once you're good with the cords you have loaded on your pads, uh, what you can do is to simply drag and drop them on your project windows. So let's say I'm starting with uh, A minor. Then the second chord, uh, let's go with C over G. Then uh, F. Actually, you know what? F sus2. It's going to be nice. And then uh, C over E. Okay, so let's have a listen. Okay, nice. So that's one way you can do it. You can also trigger those chords and record them directly on your project window. So what I'm going to do here, as an input, instead of selecting my Q49 as an input, I'm going to select chord pads. And this way, when um, uh, pressing my MIDI controller, pressing those notes on my MIDI controller, that will trigger those chords. So let's activate the click. So this is an efficient way to just lay down some chords, experiment with different chords, and just use my, uh, just one finger, just by using one finger, I can just lay down a chord progression without having to, uh, to be a, an experienced keyboard player. Now, something else that I can do is to right click and uh, click on create chord symbols. That will create a chord track which is a bit different than the pads. Uh, so this is going to take those chords and it's going to display the chords on that track, which is again very, very practical. Um, you can double click on one of the chords and that will bring the chord editor. So at this point, I can tweak my chords, try some chords out, um, go to the next one, do the same. And this is basically what I get. I have my chords, I have my MIDI track, and now I'm ready to just tweak around, add some more stuff to this line, and uh, let's go and add some, some rhythm. Let's choose a drum groove. So I'm going to create myself a groove agent VST instrument that is again part of Cubase. It's a very cool drum module. Um, very simple to use. It looks complicated, but it's actually pretty user-friendly. So I'm going to load one, um, uh, one drum kit. I actually have a, a preset that I already worked on. So let's uh, use this one. And now this is linked to my Q49 controller. So I'm just going to record a quick groove here. All right, so let's double click. And now I have my uh, MIDI editor. I can also use the drum editor if I want to by clicking on the no drum map, select this one. And that will uh, display the uh, drum editor at the bottom. So I can um, add a few things to that groove if I want to like hi-hats. Uh, so let's find the hi-hat sound, use the drumstick tool. and then copy that over and so on. Okay, so this is one way we can do it. Simple way to create yourself a groove, but there's another way that is quite cool also by using Groove Agent. So let's, if I open Groove Agent, I have access to patterns and patterns are very, very cool. It's a bit like chord pads, but for drums. I'm gonna have some patterns already loaded. So if I click on that pad, that will trigger a drum pattern, a very cool drum groove. So I can simply use that pad for, for example, if I like this one, I can just drag and drop it directly on my virtual instrument track and copy it over by just um, selecting the end, the right end part of that event. There's a small square in the middle of the, uh, the edge and I'm just gonna slide that down to the right and that will copy over a bunch of, um, of that MIDI event.
Okay, that simple, so that's pretty nice. So I'm gonna keep it this way, so this is one way you can, you know, create a drum groove in a very fast way. So this is going to be it for this video. Now you know how to record MIDI. You know what MIDI is. If you were you were not familiar with the concept of MIDI recording, you know how to use a virtual instrument within Cubase and also how to create yourself a drum groove uh, using the chord pads to be able to, uh, to work with different chord progressions for your song arrangements or rearranging a worship song for your team, changing a chord out of a worship song that, you know, a lot of people know sometimes just playing with different voicings or different tensions out of a chord is going to add some flavor to your arrangement and that can make a huge difference uh, for the entire mood of that worship song so uh, there you go guys i hope that was helpful if so share and like this video and if you're new to the ccli youtube channel feel free to subscribe and to click the notification bell so on the next video um, i'm going to talk about audio recording because we're going to record some uh, some vocals some electric and acoustic guitars as well to add up to what we already have here on this very simple music arrangement all right my friends god bless you and i'm going to see you on the next video